welcome to uh, this episode of the. What we're live? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We're live. <laughs> welcome everybody to this episode of Top Deck, the Top Deck Talk Show. Uh, we are joined by the very special guest this week, Pavko Gale, cosplayer himself. Who? Pavel Burza. <laughs> Uh, and of course, Hello. I am joined by Crash, who is subbing in for Jagoras, and our other guest, Ash Lizalithesis. Yes, that's my new name. <laughs> yep, so uh, for those of you guys who might know, uh, Pavko Burza is... Uh, Bertha <laughs> is a uh, CDPR community developer. You guys all know who he is. Uh, no. And Ash Lizzle is uh, a streamer who is part of Top Deck. Uh, say hi, guys. A little bit about yourself. If we might not know you. Well, I think uh, we all know Bertha. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm just a streamer new to uh, Top Deck. Finally a GM, thank God. Um, Congrats. But yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> It was pretty controversial, but uh, I made it finally, so pretty happy about that. Yeah, yeah, you were using that uh, that Chris Skellige deck. We may touch on that a little bit later. Uh, and how are you doing, Crash? Oh, I'm I'm quite good. I had a 20-hour stream yesterday, so I'm in oh, perfect condition to stay <laughs> awake for another 24 hours today. Uh. <laughs> Sounds perfect. And of course, we have a very exciting week as this is the week where only a few days ago we had the launch of the new PTR clients. Uh, everybody's talking about that. There's a lot of excitement on Reddit. People are, you know, very much in favor of the, you know, the name changes, the summoning circle changes. Um, and we're all looking forward, uh, you know, so some of us more optimistically than others, we're all looking forward to the new uh, patch. Uh, now we we know that the PTR is ending on the fifth as well, and I I, mm -hmm. I I do think that I heard that the season end would be on the eighth. Is that right, Berza? Uh, I can confirm. Okay. Well, season might end earlier, but uh, oh. as for coming the update, the update will be on the eighth. So uh, that's the day we're aiming for, of course. Uh, yeah. Right on. Okay, great. Uh, and of course, with the PTR comes a lot of changes. Uh, we have, you know, a bunch of number tweaks. Dwarf's got a bit of a nerf, which people have been, you know, saying that they wanted for a while. Uh, I am curious now. I, I, I know what my answer is, uh, but everyone's very excited about the new names, and I'm curious. Uh, if you guys, I don't know how much you all are into the Witcher 3 lore, but if you guys have a favorite name that you are happy to see back again, uh, starting with Ash Lizzle. Um, well, for me, it's just like, I don't really have a favorite because I'm not all deep like in the lore. I just have to get there still. But I like whatever they did to all the Skelly guards that now like uh, the clan units and all. Normally it would just say Tersak as a, as a tag or something, but it's now in the name and I like that a lot. And also that they changed the Svalblot. Like, Svalblot is now completely gone, and apparently it's Cultist, or what is it? I believe, right? Yeah, what yeah, it's Cultist. <laughs> what? Yeah, what? Yeah. What? Me? No, I know nothing. Svalblot <laughs> is gone, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they just okay. call them Cultists. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. Burza, do you, do you have uh, any, any standouts? It's a synthesis, of course, uh, coming back. I like that name. Um... What else? I think Ida's full name is something lots of has lots of flavor to it. Um, so I'm 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 pretty much hyped for those. I mean, we really wanted like after the the, the whole community outcry, we wanted to bring them back, um, and we pretty much got all the guys who are very lore heavy in our team to 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 sit down and redo them. Of course, try to keep them in some way um, limited to 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 so they're not super too long, but still to yeah. for them to have to have the fl lower flavor that people liked. So um, it was actually really cool to 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 go back to these, and I'm happy that um, the guys decided to do it. Crash, I have a feeling I know what your answer might be. Um, my answer is obviously going to be Ash. Ash Lizalentesis Blaze, yes. uh, yes. lo lovely name, yes, my favorite. <laughs> the, the Blaze part really, really speaks to me very, very personally to a yes. deep level. I'm very emotionally touched, and like I just remember my childhood. It's such a such a <laughs> great name. It really inspires yes. me to to see greatness. What about you, yourself, Swim? What, what do you? Oh, my, my personal favorite in terms of the changes that we have seen is, of course, 
Uh, error didn't break glass. Uh, <laughs> However, I, I'm actually personally disappointed that we didn't get uh, the full name of Coral. Uh, yeah, like, that's so, like, so, like that would fit in anything. Yeah, <laughs> the, well, it's as far as... It's, it's too long. Yeah, well... If you go with the full one, of course. Rip in pieces, asterisk, finger burger. <laughs> uh, anyway, the PTR is live, and with it, a lot of changes. Uh, we obviously want to talk a little bit about these changes, uh, and, you know, it's possible one or two people might have kind of like a question uh, for Burza. I'm sure you'll get poked a lot at the end when we go to viewer questions. Um, okay. But I want to hear how you guys feel about, like, the changes and, like, the balanced direction that, like, things are going with. Uh, and you can, you know, you, you, you can be, you know, pretty forthcoming. Uh, how do you, what, what, what do you think about, like, the direction that things are taking, Ash Lizzle? And, like, what things are you happy about and what things are you unhappy about? Because unhappy about? I think everybody has things that they're both happy and unhappy about. Yeah, well, obvious, obviously, thank God the dwarves got nerfed. <laughs> it was about Rip. time. And even, like, the thing for me that's also all over Reddit, apparently, which, I mean, the veterans, of course, it's, like, a huge topic right now, and yeah. as a Skelliger, I think, it, like, it probably has to get changed, in my opinion, it will. because, yeah, okay, because it's, it's, it's really, really strong. already. Hey, <laughs> I got a leak out, seems good, <laughs> but, <laughs> um... And also something that is like on my mind a lot as well is of course Nilfgaard's spies, like the enforcers. Because they will also change. Yeah, okay. Oh, for, I was gonna say another <laughs> another leak. Well, we, good, we got confirmation already. Got Here it here. is from the seems horse's good, mouth. <laughs> well, apparently uh, a lot of things that I would like to see some changes are happening, so that's great. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Ash Lizzle, there's, there's a very artistic quality in terms of trying to direct conversation to get, get <laughs> the leaks. <laughs> yeah, you know, like this this should be my thing, like <laughs> getting the leaks out of Burza. Like, here we go. Yeah, the Burza yeah, like, whisperer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The leak whisperer. Anyway, Bur Burza, what are what are you what are you excited about? I'm actually, you know, interested to hear your take on this all. Well, for me, I think I've been I mean, yesterday I also fired up PTR and I, I what I saw was veterans everywhere. I played like six games was all against veterans. I'm like, guys, come on, this is a test server. You just test stuff. You don't have to play like <laughs> the best thing. I mean, you're not you're not doing it for points. You're not doing it for rewards. You're not doing it for anything. So you can at least you know go in and have fun. And you're and you don't have you know dwarfs everywhere. So you're pretty much good. But what they do is they pretty much play the most OP deck. So I met up with the guys this morning. I'm like, guys. So you guys have seen the feedback from PTR. They're like, yeah, 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 we've seen it. I'm like, there's a couple of things. One, enforcers. Two, um, uh, veterans. And I think there's, um, we kind of talked a little bit about, about um, mill and stuff like that. So they were like, yeah, I mean, they pretty much see like what the feedback is themselves. So I don't always have to like tell them. But uh, we talk and we kind of see what's what's going on within, in, with, within the community. And um, as far as I know, like um, veterans, this one thing that's they're most likely going to go back to being supports because um, we had them on soldier. And that's just I mean, the, the amount of power that you can dish out last round is just crazy. Um, that's one thing. And the other thing is enforcers who are hitting retroactively, which was wasn't really how they were supposed to be designed. I mean, ideally, you play them. You give your opponent an option to counter that. If he doesn't counter, you start putting out the spies, and then you start making damage. So that's how it should naturally progress, but that wasn't the case. So uh, they know that this needs to be changed. And that was, I think, that was one of the biggest outcries that I saw personally uh, was the fact that, you know, spy and card is still going to be now very, very crazy, and it's totally going to, like, you know... Um, destroy everything and like veterans i mean we're it's pretty much we put them on ptr we're like let's see yeah. how bad this will get and it got like super super bad so we we're like okay <laughs> well, um, that's what a ptr is for yeah and i like how everybody's like oh you guys are doing ptr i know last ptr lasted one day uh it was more of a server infrastructure test than an actual ptr that you can actually gather feedback from but for this one like well we came prepared not only do we have um, an option to report everything through playgwen.com. So you just go uh, choose PTR and send your feedback. 
we also I'm also like working with the whole community team to 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 gather as many things as possible. And another cool thing that I'm that I'm kind of working on behind the scenes is to have like really really insightful patch notes, meaning like a proper overview. And I've actually done like for every uh, thing which deserved the nerf or above, I pretty much wrote down uh, the old um, tooltip, the the new tooltip, and and the reasoning behind the change. So I've been working with the design team on that to kind of bring more clarity. Um, Because I think that was also requested for the community. So, I mean, it's pretty much new year, new stuff, and we're trying to move forward with 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 cool stuff. Yeah, great. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are you know excited to hear all that. A lot of people I've been seeing like a bunch of comments that are kind of like they've lost faith, and you know they're you know the last PTI they're like. But the, the the fact that this one is you know going to be approaching more of like a rebalancing phase you know will I I think return a little bit of faith to the community. Uh, yeah, I hope I hope because like um, the the whole like over Christmas and New Year's like it's it's been a tough time. It's been, I mean it's oh, not yeah. only been a tough time for me like to read everything, but it was a tough time to uh, for everybody who's actually working on the game who's maybe not so vocal, but they still read things like Reddit, they still read our forums, they read everything that people write on social media. And it, and it kind of touches them because think about like you're working, I don't know, you're a programmer, an illustrator, I like illustrations, they always get praised. But if you're a, like a programmer or you designed a new UI and then you read like the comments then pretty much everybody kind of feels really really bad and because they worked really hard on it they thought that you know this is a this is something cool that's something that people will enjoy and then you get super negativity and with negativity and the internet it's like it starts as this little little tiny tiny snowflake and then it becomes this huge boulder that you know destroys everything so I mean we've made our mistakes also I'm not saying that you know we're not here to blame but uh, we've learned a lot from it, and I think it's it's just it's pretty much time to move on. And I know we've pretty much used up, um, you know, a lot of people's faith in us, and we've used up a lot of kind of respect and stuff like that. But right now we're trying. I mean, we have to rebuild it somehow. And you know, <sighs> yeah, it's it's not going to be easy, but I think I think we can do it. I think we can do it. Well, man, I, I hope this patches uh, the the. A part, a, a large part of getting that, uh, getting that sorted out. Because I, I too have uh, browsed Reddit uh, once or twice. <laughs> Don't do it. It's a trap. Uh, well, no, normally, they're they're you know they're very nice and caring people. Yeah. <laughs> when everything is fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Internet communities can can always be a little wrong. polarizing. True. Uh, I don't know. They crash. They tend to go to the words towards the extreme no matter which direction so yeah it, it seems worse than it actually is um yeah swim oh well i was just gonna ask like what you know what what are you uh what are you thinking about these changes now knowing the leaks that you now know uh, well no i'm 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 really happy to hear that spies are not gonna stay the same uh, i'm happy veterans are not staying the same though i can't say i agree with the change back to support. I think there's a way to keep the archetype playable without it being oppressive. Um, I'm not saying like, you know, I'm the best designer and I know this would 100% yeah. work, but I'd like to see it tried where you would essentially just remove three or two points from veterans themselves um, so that you actually have to pay a cost to strengthening your units for your last round. So instead of, you know, you're playing your 10, your, you, you know, your four tens or whatever in round one, you're actually playing like four sevens or something. Yeah. And in that way, you're actually paying with the tempo price of your opponent could potentially just play three cards out tempo and then go up to cards or whatnot. And that gives you like a very risk uh, reward type of situation where your opponent can play around it by trying to, you know, gain tempo and gain card advantage and even though your cards are going to be stronger you might not have as many um but yeah i'm happy they're not staying the same <laughs> they're slightly too yeah. strong right now either yeah. way uh i think i'd like to see two additional changes like again I- i'm happy a patch is coming i'm just like trying to get out all the things i could Go think of it. that would I'm make it better notes. 
as as far as NR goes, we've seen that NR has essentially shifted into a one archetype direction, where their secondary archetype is extremely weak right now. That being Temerians, they're only well, okay, we've seen seen over out of it as well, but um, we don't really see Temerian lists anywhere. And now we're also seeing a commander's horn nerf by a lot, which is one of the only big point plays the Marians had. Except they don't receive any um, buff in other places, right? So yeah. they get a big silver nerf while they've, they're already kind of weak and they don't receive a compensation. So we're probably going to see if the Marians do the same. Probably a meta where the Marians aren't playable. Hansel is, of course, still playable. Um, and I think my only other potential problem with the like current state or whatnot would be greedy consume, just because <laughs> the win condition or loss condition is extremely binary. Either your opponent has the counters and you lose, or your opponent doesn't have the counters and you win. And I don't quite particularly think that style of deck is good to have be a good deck. Does that make English sen sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and typically you need to run multiple counters as well. I mean, Swears being like a single card that can kind of like give you a win against Consume, but even when you're running like Scorch Effects, you do actually need multiple of them. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I think that's a fair point as well. I mean, I am quite curious, and I don't know if you can talk at all about this, Burza, or how much you can say, but I'm quite curious mm -hmm. if, like, we can be expecting, like, any more major changes apart from the nerfs to spies and veterans, or maybe the word major is wrong, but, like, mm -hmm. tweaks to uh, archetypes as a whole. In my mind, uh, I think a large focus should be actually given to kind of empowering more weaker archetypes. Um, because it, it, I think a lot of people focus on nerfs, but mm -hmm. the diversity of the meta feels like the, the card pool just feels like there's not as many decks that you don't, you know, you, you don't get punished for playing a little bit. Yeah, I mean, if you look at overall like player perception, um, is that when they looked at PTR, um, comments that I saw were that the changes aren't that that big when it comes to things that are getting buffed, nerfed, and mm -hmm. uh, changes to overall. Um, archetypes. So what our idea for now is to pretty much take the things that are not working or are overpowered, look at Skeletal Dwarves, and first fix this thing, these things uh, with some minor changes that you already saw in between that are in the PTR. Yeah. Um, see how the meta shifts, so it goes through like proper um, testing. And then think th think about additional buffs because, like right now, the guys I was talking with them today, they were thinking about doing something different with veterans, but they were uh, pretty much, um, you know, on the fence if they should do it and not test it properly. We're tr trying to move away from situations where everything is being shifted like totally, you know, 180 degrees and things like are what going happened crazy. With the midwinter update. Exactly. We're trying to steer away from that, do it more in a more controlled environment, and do it um, when, it's, when it's properly tested. I mean, we have a team of testers, we have a QA team that tests all these things, but I mean, the amount of testing that thousands of people can do is, I think, is more and more and more efficient than uh, whatever you can do in a studio. So, uh, we pretty much have to wait and see how everything shapes. Um, as you guys know, the meta doesn't shape that super quickly unless, you know, a couple of days in, Swim yeah. pretty much makes something crazy and then everybody <laughs> net decks that and it's OP until Swim makes another deck that <laughs> pretty much counters it. No, but I'm not I'm not saying like you're the only one design only one people only one person designed the decks. Of course there's any many other talented players out there. But uh, it's pretty much who counters who until you pretty much get into an uh, even playing field for everybody. I mean, ideally for us, it would be to come back to the to the spot that we were before Midwinter Update, where the game was super, uh, well, maybe not super balanced, but it was in a balanced state. And most, or I think almost all years, were uh, having the same amount of play, yeah. with, of course, some small exceptions. Uh, but that's pretty much, we're trying to pretty much stabilize right now. Once we stabilize, we can think about uh, working more on the cards that need uh, additional um, buffs and changes. And I mean, like whole archetypes in, in some way, because 
uh, swap and Mulligan are kind of like two different things right now, and in the way that they that they work, like Mulligan in the beginning is different than than swap. Uh, so that's like I like really like Mulligan. I, w- I wish it got more attention. Plus, I'm trying to force the dev team to 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 uh, since uh, Vrimda was a was a leader. Maybe maybe Pafko Gil can become a leader for for by mistake. But <laughs> if if I ever if I ever get this, I'll be I'll be, I'll be the happiest man alive. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I think that that pretty much answers the question. Sorry for t- talking too much. Oh man, it, that makes perfect sense. So basically, this is just like this patch is like the first step in like a larger <laughs> series of changes. Okay. Sure yeah, no, that's uh, I, I completely get that. So, and, and I'm curious, and this is something that Crash was kind of touching on before with like you know archetypes that might also need nerfs. Something I want to ask of you guys, like, what do we think when? Spine nerf guard and when veteran get nerfed, and given the fact that there's not going to be too many more changes in this update, what do we expect the best decks to be? Will there be any archetypes that come in to replace dwarfs or spies or veterans, which never had a chance to shine? Yeah. Thankfully, um, that will be the next like new cancer. What do you think, Ash Lizzle? Well, I was thinking about veterans, but now that they are changed to uh, uh, support, I'm kind of worried for Skellige overall, because also with the Restore nerf, that was Siri a Nova. great... Yeah, I mean, a lot of the strength in Skellige is now gone. Like, Restore was one of the cards, in my opinion, that carried Skellige's affection, you know, and yeah. it's gone. <laughs> well, it's not gone entirely, but... It's it's a huge nerf for Skellige overall, and now that the veterans are changed, as in that they're supports again, so that it's not uh, what she called again. The no, the two strength. Uh, I don't know what she's called again. The two strength that can summon uh, machines and no, no, not machines. Oh, spear maiden. Yeah, some something like that. Anyways, that they are not being pulled out of the deck. What was changed because they're a soldier. So I'm kind of like. <sighs> worried what Skellige's strength is going to be. But for Cancer, I mean, does Nilfgaard ever die? Seriously, like, I don't <laughs> think so. And I don't think Mill is going to be dead either, so... <laughs> Well, uh, you know? Ava- most likely Avalok will be doomed, so I think it won't. It will lose one of and its. I got another league, guys. <laughs> <laughs> just keep talking, yeah, keep talking. Yeah. We'll know just, everything. Yeah, just mo- <laughs> moderate the rest of this. Just keep. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll just keep going. You know, so <laughs> that's great news. Seriously, <laughs> nice leagues. Uh, lovely. Is Crash. there any any more doomed out here, or like? Where's that? <laughs> 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 What? <laughs> Give me more leads. <laughs> <laughs> Give me more leads. It's the only uh, thing I got. <laughs> <laughs> my, I live my life for leaks. Yeah, yeah. me too, man. Me too. Uh, Same here. My, um, well, I, my I, life's purpose is to farm leaks. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much it's pretty much pretty much uh, PT, PTSD after everything was uh, taken from 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 us from the game. I like only have a limited amount of leaks. I better use them this year <laughs> before I'm all out. No, I'm joking. Yeah. Do you, do you guys uh, crash birds? Do you guys have any uh, specific things that you think might end up kind of coming in to replace the void left by dwarfs and spies? Um. <laughs> <laughs> there's a few decks that are probably going to be like much stronger where dwarves were essentially keeping them down especially like Ithlan Tremors so swarm decks uh, have a potential to come yep. back into the deck uh, into the meta something like swarm monsters swarm uh, Nilv- uh, swarm NR I've actually been playing it recently and it's it's actually quite strong even now as long as you don't face dwarves um there is a Hanselt, Hanselt, obviously. Um, now that there's no dwarves that can kind of just combat the Hanselt tempo by just playing as many points by just playing bronzes, um, Hansel also has a finisher, whereas versus dwarves, the villain threat and Mert never went on off, so mm, Hanselt couldn't exactly. really win the game. Now, now Hanselt can win the game, and Hanselt being a 60-point leader or whatever... Is uh yeah that's scary. <laughs> uh, consume greedy consume always stays on 
as an option in pretty much any patch because Neckers are that strong. Uh, past that, if we're going to see a lot of like greedy consume, we're probably not going to see a lot of uh, X-Men as an option. So b Because X-Men lose to the same thing, greedy consume loses. And yeah, you're not going to run X-Men if you can run greedy consume, which yeah. is kind of better. Um, but I think Cursed SK, uh, for the, all the SK people that are worried now, Cursed SK has pretty much remained the same. Nothing has really changed. You run your Krach or your Bran, whichever version you end up going for. Um, and it still remains as strong. Slightly weaker, obviously, because of the Restore nerf. Um, yeah. But if you consider that you have to draw Restore, you have to be able to use Restore early, and then you also have to be able to res the restore target for restore nerf to actually end up mattering. It doesn't happen as frequently as you would like. Yeah. So I don't think it's nearly as big of a nerf as people are uh, expecting it to be. Uh, you do lose some points, but restore remains a really strong play. And you can even use it in round three on a uh, Hey Maiden, for example, to pull out something stronger. Um, I don't know. I think this might be a potentially very diver diverse meta, uh, mm -hmm. just because dwarves, in a sense, were extremely oppressive because they had a lot of AOE while having a lot of tempo as well. So you could, and and obviously didn't play tall either. So I, I was gonna say that. So no deck could really, you know, counter them specifically, other than say mill. Um, so we had a very oppressed meta where. Only decks that can just completely go all in on points could really match them, exactly. i.e. Spies or Consume. Uh, since we won't have that top deck in the meta, um, the top deck's most likely, or like the best deck in the meta, is most likely going to actually have a counter because, as you said, um, veterans are getting nerfed. So most likely the, the best deck won't be just bronze point spam, vanilla point spam, which is really good because you don't want the best deck to be that because that's kind of unco exactly. uncounterable. Yeah. So I, I'm quite excited. I think it's I think it's a huge point, the fact that the dwarf deck uh, specifically didn't play tall units. Because you were saying, like, because they play tremors, they keep out decks that swarm. But it's also very important that because they don't play big units, they also keep out decks that try to control that kind of thing. Stuff like Hensel, which has, you know, relied on kind of a villain treadmill finisher that felt like a lot weak. I was cutting villain treadmill from my Hensel decks. It just didn't feel quite as good. And now it's going to be back in a full force. I actually think Hensel could be pretty good. And like you said, I actually think this meta will be a lot more diverse just off the back of these changes than a lot of people are thinking. Mm. Sure. Ah. And of course, the, the restore change you're absolutely right about as well. Uh, it's still a 19 point silver and you can still do a lot with it. So hopefully everything will end out all right. I think one of the things that I'm maybe more concerned about is uh, the state of monsters where it does feel as if you do kind of have to play consume if you want to be on the level. Aridin could actually end up pretty good. Uh, the Jakar nerf is nice, and I suspect Mithril could be getting one or two more points when it goes live. Uh, he's going to be six and six. Oh, look at that. So six <laughs> starting at six, plus any wild hunt units in your hand. Uh, in addition... <laughs> Easy, come it, on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, in addition to that, though, it, it does feel like they are a little bit hurt uh, by the Siri Nova change. We'll have to see how that stabilizes out. But Aridin, uh, like Crash said, decks that like just lose when you smash tempo like that, you know, this is a smaller, slower setup decks, could actually just come back full force. So, I hope to see more of that kind of thing, more of that uh, Hensel as well. Because it's, it's, it's really these just like super high value, uninteractive decks that can just absolutely take over about and smash and things should be much better now <sighs> okay so in terms of some of the other changes that we've seen mm -hmm. uh, i think there's a bit of <clears throat> there's a bit of a controversy uh, i'm sorry excuse me there's a bit of a controversy about several uh, of the changes, specifically the ones to Commander's Horn, uh, Yorvith, Meditation, 
uh, Tremor is getting nerfed as opposed to Ithlin. Uh, and I'm not sure if there was one more. I think those those are kind of the three kind of big ones that a lot of people are uh, arguing about and opposing. Some people think that Kamehameha Soren didn't need to be nerfed or that it got nerfed too hard. Some people think that, you know, Ithlin should have been nerfed instead of Tremors. Some people think that... Um, your Vith meditation got nerfed too hard, or maybe it was perfectly fine as it is. And I'd be interesting. I'd be interested to hear what you guys think about those three issues. <sighs> yeah, I was I was about to say like with the tremors. I'm not sure if it's the right to just destroy tre- tremors altogether, but not change. You know, I I mean, it's just I. I mean, Tremors was fine as it is. It's just, just the the problem was that she was just way too too strong, yeah. <laughs> basically with with everything all together, and then all the 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 guys just spawned with it. But I don't think the problem lies with um, uh, Tremors, but more with with her, basically. Mm. It's my thought on it. <laughs> and and the 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 other issues? Do you are you kind of ambivalent or haven't? Those being Commander Sworn and Yorvith Meditation. I mean, I, I get why Commander Sworn got changed because of Ethne, of course. It was like 45 points. You could have that in two turns. So that's probably yeah. the thought process behind it. But like what Crash said with, with Northern Realms being it also one of their stronger points. Um, it's also like, yeah, you. it's just weird. Like I, I get why it, it's changed, but you're also like nerfing indirectly other other factions with it basically and I'm not sure if that's the way to go like i've also heard some people say that they want to have like uh six units instead of six units times three or whatever it was mm. but to to make it just a bit more points but like hard to set up but yeah i mean i don't know it's just it's just some factions will always suffer under it i guess but it's just a shame that I think the wrong direction is a bit taken, like especially with the Northern Realms. So then again, you also have Hansel, like Crash said, it's also always going to be strong. So that's just, I think, my thoughts on it. <laughs> Not too much special. Uh, let, so, me, all right, all right. let me comment. Um, oh, okay. So for Ithleen, yeah, I mean... We know that Ithlina overall, her she herself is the problem, and tremors are not the problem. But if we pretty much started working on Ithlina right now in such a short time, we might make her in a way that she wouldn't be really, um, really good or underplayed. But I think that the guy's idea, pretty much, and the justification that they gave me was that let's that let's take into account like your opponent has 12 units on the board and an old Ithleen that you normally have would be worth around 38 points well now without the golem she'll be around 26 points of course if you have targets to do, to to, dis- to destroy so one or two power so that's still more than some of the goals that you have in the game but um i think it will not make her as auto include as she was before because you most likely have to wait till your opponent really you know bleeds out plays out all the cards and then you pretty much uh, use the tremors for a lot of points. I've actually seen her being more useful with uh, doing um, double double thunder. Mm. So pretty much what we want to do is is see how it goes from here. Like if she will be out of include card and everybody will be still using tremors, that means we have to pretty much go back to the drawing board and think of something for Ithleen. And it's also is like uh, an argument a lot of people have been using that even. Uh, if we come up with any other um, special card that will be pretty much good, and she will able to, she'll be able to abuse that card. So um, she's the main problem. Like we know these things, and we know what's going on. But I think to do a small step is to pretty much uh, work on changing uh, tremors and uh, remove the lesser guardian from it. All right, that makes sense. Do you have any uh, any comments on Commander Sorn or your with meditation either? Uh, Commander Sworn, pretty much uh, like uh, Shizul said, pretty much it's a card that's uh, auto include in most in most decks. And it, uh, overall, if you look at the, the 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 amount of points that it can generate, it was pretty much too high because compared to other silver cards, the the amount of points was was pretty 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 much higher. The only thing, like you guys mentioned, and I kind of liked the community idea was to have uh, six units boosted by three. I saw the idea. I think I will talk to the guys about it if, if it's even a possibility. 
because it requires then more setup. But still, if you set up everything and you have Aethna and you're able to play it twice, I mean, we've seen that so much in the in the in the in the dwarf meta that we pretty much want to kind of like stop it for for a second and see. I mean, if it's going to go down to a card that's not being played a lot, then most likely we have to go back and still work on it a little bit more. I mean, with these things, it's easy to I mean talk about them on paper, you know, try try them and test them. It's different to actually have them out and for players to sit down and actually do it. So, um, I mean, we're we're open to stuff. We're not like saying, okay, we're changing it. We're we're done. We we have the best game. We can we can move on. So, um, that's one thing. And with your of it, um, as much as uh, I didn't like the idea at the beginning. If you look at the the amount of points a good Yorvid could generate was was just was just off the roof, and we were kind of like, okay, that's that's too much. But if we limit him to a row, we let people kind of uh, run away from it. That's one thing, and the other thing is that he will pretty much be worth less points, which I think in some cases is good. I mean, he was he was like the number one gold, and you would play him in every... I pretty much played him in every every um, Skyrtel deck. If it was a deck consisting of elves or, or dwarves, you would always, always have him. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that it will stay that way, but as with everything, but I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's going to be overall a good and healthy change for the game. And um, I know that uh, people are also talking about Monster Nest. The current development on Monster Nest is that, um, I mean, the one that I heard this morning is that uh, it will have a uh, boost, but it only be boosted by one. So you uh, spawn a bronze or uh, spawn a bronze necrophage or insectoid, and you boost it by one. So that's that's the last development I heard. But uh, of course, don't quote me on that because all these things should be considered <laughs> as it. it's too late. Uh, <laughs> should be considered as leaks. And um, they might happen, they might not, but most likely they will, uh, because yeah, we really, really um, listen to feedback and um, really read what's going on right now among the player base. Yep. I'm, uh, I'm going to have to go like maybe against the, the, the flow or whatever and say I think like nerfing Tremors is actually correct. I think Tremors was kind of an insanely strong card. Uh, as well as, in a sense, extremely badly balanced because it could swing from four points to twenty points as a bronze, and your only control over that was what you queued into, right? If you queued into a swarm NR player, you're gonna literally play a twenty-point bronze every single game, and if you queue into, I don't know, uh, spies or some other deck that doesn't play units on board, maybe like greedy consume, you're gonna actually have a six point bronze. Um so I think like Tremors as a as a card should be a hard counter quote unquote to swarm metas where you play it in swarm metas and not in every single meta, right? Um it it was a card that could with only six units on board it can hit twelve value, which is like almost average bronze level and considering that spells are usually uh, played with a tutor that's a really potent card that you know most decks play more than six units it's it's strong i played around with a meme deck that just like ran three tremors with triple sage and you just play tremors <laughs> constantly and i won games <laughs> I won games with a full-on removal deck with like triple tremors because tremors ended up being good enough. Um, so I, I don't think like that nerf is unjustified whatsoever. Commanders for nerf, nah. yeah. Yeah. It, it's yeah. it's I I don't mind. I don't necessarily mind the nerf. I'm okay with commanders for getting nerf because it essentially gives more option as well to the player to what they put into the deck now you don't have to run the talus commander's horn because it's that good yeah uh the problem i have with it is that there is no compensation for something like tamarians now obviously if if right commander's horn is broken um in a sense that like it's really good and it was abusable, and there's not many decks that can keep up with that tempo. So yeah, nerfing Commander's Horn to stop that combo specifically is fine. Um, the problem is again not giving the decks, the other decks that used it, any additional power, because uh, they're just gonna suffer more for 
a deck that was too strong. So you think maybe um, making it doomed could have been a better solution? That is a potential. We, we saw... That's actually a very good point, because what could happen, or what happened before, was also Neneke getting nerfed because Commander's Horn was that strong, because yes. Neneke would, you know, put Commander's Horn back in the deck. So there's a potential. You could even maybe revert that Neneke nerf, which I really, really dislike, because <laughs> it, limits, it limits options in deck building as well, because you don't have the option of putting a tactic back for Natalis, etc., etc., so you're forced yeah. to run more tactics. Um, so... Maybe the problem was that the replaying Commander's Horn was too strong, because that has happened twice now, where it was, you know, a problem. Whereas decks, previous patch, for example, there was a Swarm uh, monster deck, the one Freddy brought to uh, Challenger. Uh, that deck played Commander's Horn, and it was a good card, but it wasn't, you know, oh my god, he has Commander's Horn, now I can't win. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> that's actually, like, a good way of nerfing, I think, Swim. Uh, again, it, it's interesting. There's a lot of options to play around with. Um, I, again, I don't really mind the specific nerf. I mind the decks that use that not get buffed. Uh, and yeah. your death meditation getting... I think it's too strong a nerf, but it's really hard to balance a card like this. Oh, yeah. Because the, the effect is far too strong. So, so I like leaning on the... Um, weak side rather than the auto quote unquote auto include side right uh that's fine with me a small note doppler uh lost the organic mm, tag yes. so the only competitive use of doppler which was herbalist into doppler is now not possible so doppler doesn't see any play pretty much uh because it's just not a good card the question is is that good or bad right and Honestly, I'm actually leaning towards good because I don't want to play against Doppler. I, I don't like create as a mechanic for high-level competitive play. So if a create mechanic like that existed, you know, at the highest level, I probably wouldn't be very happy. Uh, so I'm actually happy with that change, even though it takes away an archetype or a way of playing. Um, yeah. It kind of sucks for a meme Queen's Guards deck that wanted to get six <laughs> guards, but uh, <laughs> so way. I mean the the Doppler change, I, as far as I can tell, unless it was done to kind of like fit like kind of more the flavor of the card a little better, was probably a concern over the new veterans plus the herbalists. In the case that the veterans are getting reverted, Burza does this possibly indicate? that the Doppler change might be as well? I'm just curious. Uh, no, Dopplers stay the oh, same. Okay. I mean, Dopplers will be used by Squirtle for sure. I can tell you that. I mean, I, oh. I saw some decks running um, Dopplers. The problem with Doppler is, like you said, um, the access card for, for, for him was Herbalist. Yeah. Uh, so you would normally get a three power unit plus additional unit from Doppler. Uh, it was kind of too easy to do, uh, so we wanted to decrease the accessibility to Doppler in some way. Uh, we'll see pretty much how this will if this, is this, if this change will make it like something that you know will make it not being played as much as we think it will. Then we pretty much have to uh, go back to the drawing board with that card because it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Yeah. In terms of like my my stance on these changes, I think the the change to tremors instead of Ithlin is fine as like a kind of stopgap measure, as you were kind of saying, Burza, just like an opportunity for you guys to you know figure out exactly where you want to take Ithlin uh, in terms of a direction. Uh, I feel a little bit uh, sad about the death of Commander Soren. Uh, it was very abusable with Ithni for sure, but I actually think that more so than itself, it. Uh, drew a bit of a drew from problems with other cards like for example i mean italis is still a very good card and could be something like five instead uh and Ithne is you know going to go on to cause problems later as well i find but uh that's totally fine and honestly like crash said it's really really weird to comment on how we feel about uh your med uh, meditation that's it, it's a tricky one i mean the card in its current form, I feel like, in terms of the change, like the PTR form, it probably won't see competitive play. And I feel like I would have liked 
a slightly softer nerf, but I'm not sure exactly what would have been the best option, unfortunately, for that. Uh, in terms of like what you guys have actually been playing on PTR and like Burza, I know you know you you were saying you you were playing PTR yourself. What do you what do you guys been playing? Have there been like any you know particularly fun decks? Any new things to try out? And then we've seen some improvements to like old archetypes. I'm sure you tried Cursed Crash. I'm positive. No. 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 I <laughs> I, I loaded up Gwent. <laughs> I uh, so yeah, I might as well start with vets just to see how they are. I, I played seven or eight games. I won eight games, and then I kind of quit playing. <laughs> <laughs> I it wasn't I, it wasn't like disgust or anything like that. It was just um, the the changes that I saw weren't big enough, uh, in my opinion. Like yes, dwarves are now nerfed, but every other deck essentially remained the same as far yeah. as PTR is concerned. Not saying that this is going to reflect onto the patch. Um, but as far as the PTR is concerned, there were a lot of like one point card changes, right? There was a lot of small tweaks and whatnot, but actual archetypes still play essentially the same. The strategy of an archetype is the same. The one deck that I did try out that was really cool, uh, though I couldn't quite get a finisher to work, uh, was Mulligan Elves. Uh, you play a lot of Elves and then you play your 18 point mulligan elf boy uh Elias, with the other yeah. mulligan elf boy um Elias, yeah yeah no 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 not the last um uh, it's the yeah that the the aoe buff uh, the all your elves by it. one yep and um okay, that, that was a pretty good deck it, it actually yeah. like round one it was really strong the problem was finding a way to win round three uh, I tried something like Villain, Threat, and Mirth with like Milva and yes. Yaven and something like that. It, 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 it wasn't quite there. Um, obviously, it would have to be optimized, but that's an interesting deck to look into, uh, potentially, yeah. as the patch comes out. Uh, other than that, yeah. I think so as well. Nash Lizzle, what have you been playing? I, uh, just like Crash, I just went in and played some veterans <laughs> <laughs> right away. I just wanted to see, like... Well, if, if it was really that strong, yeah, it was really that strong. So I'm glad that changed. I also tried out the the deck that I was playing right now, like on not the, the PTR force, but just trying it out if it worked the same. Found out that Bone Talisman actually got nerfed too. And yeah. was I have any any like words on that? Like why? <laughs> ah, Bone Talisman, Bone Talisman. Yeah, I mean. Uh, with it, um, it's pretty much as an item. It was it was easily tutored by clan protectors, and uh, it was also like, if you look at it, it was able to generate a lot of power for a bronze card. Uh, so you pretty much could generate 15 points easily. So you would go clan protector, so two into talisman two, and then bear, which is 11, it gives you a 50 point bronze pretty much. I mean, we. Thought that the easiest change to it would be to remove the boost because it gives then it goes it's less power. Uh, I mean, we'll see, we'll see. I mean, it's it's something that's still still kind of work in progress, but um, yeah. Yeah, that would make sense for sure. It makes sense. Yeah. I also saw a lot of when I was playing PTR, a lot of uh, uh, reveal again. Not sure why, but I saw so many reveal like when I had matchups. I think it's still good. Like the overall. Reveal yeah. Reveal is that deck everybody wants to be good. Yeah. And then every and patch, then when the reveal is good, time. everybody will hate it. Yep. It, yeah. It's it's gonna be that deck. Yeah. And sure. uh, yeah. Hmm. I don't I know, Crash. I, I I think to be fair though, you could probably describe a quite good amount of decks <laughs> like that. <laughs> uh, no, I think I think reveal is like a massively extreme example though, yeah. because if reveal is actually tier one. What can you do against it when they can play around all of your counters? You cry. Yeah. You just cry and you lose. <laughs> and, and, and you lose because they have too many points because they're the best deck. Yeah. And uh, I, I, don't wanna, I, would, I don't want to live in that world. And then Reveal is a nice position where it's kind of like a tier 2, tier 3 uh, deck that new players really like playing, but isn't really seen competitively. I, I think that's a great spot for it, honestly, and I'm, I'm sorry for all the reveal lovers, but I, I wish it stays there. Yeah, it's On it's the, honestly solid. It's two-ish. Yeah, 
on the topic of again PTR changes um, as as well as like bone talisman, uh, though the bone talisman and Siri Nova feel that they have gotten over nerfed, where they are very strong cards. I feel that there is ways to play around them, and they require a big enough condition where the payoff is justified. Now, I, I agree with Siri Nova being maybe nerfed by a point, but three points I don't makes it essentially unplayable because it's almost on par with other bron- uh, other golds now, and the deck building cost is just too high. Outside of SK, no deck would ever even consider it, I think. I think maybe Eredin. Maybe Eredin does. I'm not looking at chat right now, but I can tell you, I'm, I'm sure they're all telling you that it, it would be buffed if it was at 24. I, I, oh, I've, yeah. I've heard, I, people like saying that one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that that is definitely true. The the Gigni. Um, but I mean, Igni, if you look at play rates of Igni, it's it's not that high up. It's not a card that people use in auto, as an auto include. I mean, you see yeah, it in tournaments. Igni. But most of the time, you really, I mean, statistically wise, you really don't see it that much. And um, in a way, I kind of feel that it's, it's, I mean, you could consider it a, a, a nerf, but, or you could say it's a buff, but for me, it's a nerf because you, because you lo- lose three points out of it. But um, like, if you play Squirtle, if you have anything that buffs your hand, you can easily get her to, you know, crazy, crazy, crazy points. So, I think that overall it's not that big of a nerf, and I think she's still she's still very viable. Um, I mean, in, in, in every deck that I, I used her in uh, after the change to PTR, she performed more than more than more than well. I, I'm I'll I'll be happy to be proven wrong. Like I, I want the card to be an option, so you know if if it's an option, I'm really happy. If it isn't, then that's too bad, and we can change that. Or I'm, I'm assuming you can change that, right? So there's nothing wrong uh, specifically. It's just a worry I had potentially. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see the new patch. It'll, it's always nice to play, you know, new decks, new cards. Yeah, absolutely. And even even the smallest changes, I'm sure a lot of people are disappointed that this patch isn't bigger, but even the smallest changes in terms of like short-term implications, meta implications can have like really profound results. Just take a look at the last patch before the midwinter update, the card expansion, the 20, 20 new cards that included like Foul Ale and Avalak the Sage, if you guys remember way back then. Uh, that was like a really small patch, like most of the cards it revealed weren't competitive and it didn't really shape deck building, but the meta is stabilized into like a really balanced state after that as well and i i I do hope that's going to be something that we end up looking at here so in terms then of cards that were not necessarily just cards but also archetypes also just factions in terms of what we might have wanted to have been buffed up because we've spent a lot of time talking about nerf but in terms of things that we were hoping might have gotten buffed and you know still might of course at this point uh cards specifically or full archetypes or cards that are made to support archetypes what are we thinking you know would be nice if it got buffed any outstanding opinions ash lizzle <laughs> make <laughs> queen scar straight again please yeah like. <laughs> oh man <laughs> But I was I was afraid, like talking about like, the veterans and the uh, Fico Varo medics and all. Like I just want to play Queen's Guard again, man. <laughs> but <laughs> it will probably never happen. But it's it's a girl can dream, like you know. But oh <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah. What I would also still like to see, I, just I don't. <laughs> It's always so weird because I, I know that Mill still will find play, you know, and I actually, it's, I want to play more decks, you know, like, I, 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 part of me was really happy that the veterans were back, that you could have more archetypes now, but now they're not back again <laughs> in a way, and you know me, like, I play Skellige the most, so Skellige is my faction, I play a lot of Skellige, but I would also just like to see, um, uh, Sagai full tests and, and such, like, be a bit better, if that could be, because I didn't know if it was right, but I thought I saw it on Twitter that full test had a nerf? What was that? I don't know. Does anyone know about that? I saw it on Twitter. Mm. I, this is news to me. The, yeah, uh, I, 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 I saw I'm something not aware. on Twitter today, but 
I saw something on Twitter, but I would just like to see that stuff with just like more more scale again. <laughs> Not just one beast master play a bear and, and all that. Yeah, full test pride. That was it. Full test pride. That was was weird, but there's a uh, there's a wrong wrong interaction on Fultus Sprite. I think it's it's a it's a bug if I remember correctly. That okay. it's already fixed. Like it's already fixed. Ooh. But it's not in the not fixed in the PTR, but fixed um, in oh, the, right, the build right. that we're working on. So yeah, great. Mm. Mithrunar well. is gonna be ecstatic. Ah, <sighs> what, <if> I... <laughs> <laughs> what, what were we gonna say, Crash? <laughs> no, like I think a card that I haven't seen really be good in a long time that I'd love to see back just because I think it was a really interesting deck to play would be Reaver Hunters. It was one of the more I, I personally think it was one of the more skill intensive decks to play because yeah. the way you played your points was extremely first of all it, it was potent as in you could play a lot of points but Miss like miss timing at any point could also cost you essentially the full game, not de aligning your river hunters and whatnot. So I think uh, I think river hunters would be really neat to see back. Do you think uh, it'll be easy without field medics though? I, Do you I, really like want it, that? Do you really want that? <laughs> it would be a different type of deck, of course. It wouldn't play exactly the same as it did. But yeah, I think it's an interesting deck that we haven't seen in a long time that could work and wouldn't be oppressive necessarily, especially with the spy changes. Um, because now you can't you can't really just force out round one like super, super early with like some kind of spy play, right? Um, I don't know, it's a potential thought that would be a need to have bad yeah. be back because it was one of those deck I, decks I played like half a year ago and I haven't seen it since at all. Uh, other decks that are worth mentioning, I guess, would be something with Dagon, because Dagon has also not really seen any play for a while now. Yeah. Um, uh, the Nilfgaard can stay in the dumpster for all I care. <laughs> SK seems okay. There, there's something to do there, of course, with maybe great swords, but I never really liked the deck very much from either side, so uh, I'm okay with them not being strong. And then Squirtle, of course, with the dwarves getting nerfed, I'm not sure what's left. We'll see if the mulligan elf archetype is any good. Um, but Spellatel again. Hyperthin. Hyperthin. Uh, yeah, and, and those dash. decks could be interesting. <laughs> Maybe yeah. without dash, <laughs> 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 but hyperthin with with uh, with scorches, I think is 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 might see some play. I think it yeah, might be quite good. You know, scorch effects with dwarfs gone are gonna be better than ever. There's gonna be a bit more control <clears throat> floating also, around there. Also, I saw like today in the office, I saw Garuna playing with a with a crazy cool hand buff um, elf deck. It was really really nice. He was he was pretty much wrecking people on PDR. It was good it was good to see. <laughs> Uh, well, for, for me personally, I'd love to see some of the more underrepresented Moss archetypes get a little bit of love. Uh, you know, Moonlight, Deathwish. And honestly, I, I, I know it's a meme, but Ogroids honestly aren't as <laughs> far off as, as, as it may seem. Like, some minor tweaks to that could incentivize you to not run it as like a full deck, but like a package in an Eridan deck. Um, for example, if, if Quen were reintroduced... Uh, to the game, the ice ice uh, trolls might might be pretty good. I but I don't know if that will ever, maybe ever happen. On on the topic of a uh, duel <laughs> and your best meditation, as we were talking, a way to nerf it without over nerfing it, you could potentially just put a cap on it. Um, you know, say have a unit up to ten strength, duel another unit. And then, and then you hmm. you essentially maximize the amount of points it can get. Yeah. Where you're still allowing, you know, the option of playing it. You just don't allow it to hit those forty points, right? Because um, it's oppressive when it hits forty points. Because forty point golds, you know, are just ow, no, please stop, <laughs> go away. Um, 
So so if you put a hard cap, something like you know BTM uh, as well got that hard cap a long time ago. Uh, things like that can 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 work as a nerf without taking away like the playability of the card necessarily or immensely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, in addition to that, we've had, you know, a lot of, of course, like, the, the, the PTR has heralded a lot of, like, very minor changes. A lot of cards have gotten, like, one point added, one point removed. And I've, I've heard a lot of the community talking about, you know, like, when, like, why that feels like it won't necessarily do enough. And as Burza himself said, like, this is just, like, a small kind of balance tweak, just trying to get the meta to stabilize before they're able to put it in a position where they want to like figure out how they want to kind of rework these archetypes and like have more thoroughly tested solutions there. But I'm curious what you guys think about like some of these units that are just receiving incidental point buffs uh, and maybe better ways to like fix them, or if we think that it will eventually be fine if they if they just keep going in that direction. Like so, for for reference, cards that have received a point buff that you know might support archetypes. There's obviously you know like cards like Yennefer the Conjurer, cards like Avalak the Sage, although that wasn't supporting anything. Cards like Vincent Mace, Reaver Hunter, and I'd like to hear if Crash thinks that will be enough exactly. Um, Rot Tosser, Ifrit, Morvud, uh, Unseen Elder, Whispering Hillock, Clan Greatsword, of course, you know Bridge Troll. Across the board, Yarp and Zigrin. These are just examples. Ash Lizzle, what do you think? Um, I mean, I, I think it's just okay, I guess. I, I haven't played that much of the PTR, like I said, so I cannot say too much about it or, you know, but... Well, but just... you're, you're the Skelligan Master. Do you think uh, great swords <laughs> plus one, you know, is enough to make uh, a difference? I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I, I, I haven't, haven't played it, like... There's a lot of stuff possible. I just might check it out even tonight. Just see what I can do with with the great swords and if it's fun. The most like what I just like to is just <laughs> sounds stupid, but I don't want to play like a brain dead deck again. You know, like like the the dwarves or you know, it's great swords if they're back. That would be nice because I just I liked it. Still, they're really strong. I believe I saw some stuff about it that they still got, of course, strengthened instead of like boosted, but. I mean, overall, I think what I have seen about, like, from this patch so far, I just like it a lot, and I like the direction it's going in overall, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, I kind of, uh, I'll just jump in. I kind of like the the, 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 the overall community perception of uh, adding one point is our, our, our design team's way of uh, fixing things. But actually, it's, it's, it's not the way it looks. I mean, there is something... Uh, that each designer knows about is, is called like a power pool. So you're supposed to have a uh, number of power assigned to, let's say, in our case, it's um, bronzes, silvers, and golds. So you're pretty much supposed to generate some amount of power and it's supposed to be at a certain ceiling. So in this case, this is something that they look at when they balance card. They just don't go like, eh, this card's not working yet, plus one power. But that's how it's received <laughs> by, the, by the community. There's yeah. actually more things that go into it than just going like hmm card don't work one power next <laughs> it's not like that it's not, that's not how you design things you mean i mean you 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 look at this pool and the amount of points that a card is able to generate and also the the amount of points that it can generate if it's a combo then it should be over some type of ceiling. And, and it's not just the guys going like, oh, one power. And I saw like guys like Petrify, a shout out to Petrify. I saw him, I saw him in the chat. Uh, he wanted to talk about monsters. We'll talk about monsters in a second, most likely. <laughs> uh, but he was kind of saying that, yeah, we're just uh, one power is pretty much uh, solving, solving something. But no, nah, it's like, come on, guys. It's, it's more than that. It's more testing. It's more... Uh, thinking about you know the, the you know how much um, points something is, uh, is supposed to generate and and they know about that. I mean, these guys, you don't get into this job because I don't know because you you have to be like really really good in math. You have to be really good uh, in designing things. Thinking about unique de unique designs for cars. They don't they don't just sit there like uh, no work one power. No, it's not. It's not <laughs> so I'm just I'm just taking that off the table. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I fear I fear for the community if I ever become a game developer. Uh, my my balancing would be 
Ah, one power. That's nah, <laughs> nah, don't don't worry about it. I mean, um, there was this uh, once there was this interesting article uh, made by Magic the Gathering when it came to us how to how a game should be pretty much designed and stuff like that. I think there was one point at the bottom saying that I mean, of course, taking community feedback, but filter through it. I mean, you really have to filter through some of the things. You can't be going. You can't be going like one to one because if if our guys they just you know. Uh, sat on on Reddit, <laughs> We're, worked with the balancing team of Reddit, and I don't think we'll be in a good state. Yeah, no, you have to you have to have like a really you know, like you said, you have to filter it really thoroughly, like a sewage yeah. treatment plant. Get it, get it nice and. <laughs> uh, anyway, we we should be uh, at the point where we are able to open the floor for viewer questions. Of course, this is where everyone's excited because you are able to kind of ask Brazier in questions, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to ask things that he's not going to be able to answer. You have to, again, you have to be very tactical about these. You gotta, yeah, you gotta like, just poke him in just the right place, or just, or and just maybe he'll ask, give you a ask, ask, ask a shizzle to ask me that it's automatic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the leak. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for any questions you guys have, go ahead and at Top Deck Gwent in the chat, uh, and we will be, you know, picking through those. You guys, any of you guys, crash ask Lizzle on Berza. If you see any you like, go ahead and read it out, and we can just take it from there. Or if you personally had anything else you wanted to talk about, just pretend that somebody asked it in chat. And bring it up. <laughs> uh, oh God. <laughs> So here's one. Uh, are there any plans to be made any adjustments about the MMR system? A lot of people are curious because, of course, there's not a lot of people hitting GM yet, and the season end mm -hmm. date is very close. Yeah, this is this is something I've been talking to the guys. I mean, I I, I see it. Um, like you guys know, I'm pretty active in the community. I've I've seen like um, pretty much able, I think, to judge like based on how many people are able to get to GM. And with the system and with us moving to one month, if for sure needs adjustments, I just pretty much can't give you a date when this will happen, but I want the system very much to be adjusted to one month seasons because um, like you guys said, it's really hard to get even to rank 20. And I think that most of the, the players that we have are very dedicated and are very good. They should be able to get to at least rank 20 easily. I mean, if I can get to rank 20, uh, pretty much everybody can. <laughs> so um, I think that this is something that needs to be looked into. And um, we're aware of that. I'm, I'm just letting you guys know that we're aware of that. But I won't be making any promises until we look at statistics for this season and we actually see um, how bad the damage is, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, no questions about coin flip because I'm going to pretty much eat this <laughs> glass. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen it in chat. So I, I see a couple of people asking about the new arena mode. Now it was, uh, you know, leaked by kind of data mining and other sources that uh, the arena mode or draft mode or whatever you might call it, Comet Gwent, would uh, feature uh, the ability to choose cards between factions and with unlimited silver gold slots. Uh, now Burza, I, I assume you might be able to confirm that since it since it was. Uh, data mine from the from the game files. Or is that still not something you can say? I would wait for official announcements. Oh. I have something cool planned for that. So before we go into things like that, I I will wait for official stuff. I mean, I also like overall like data mining and stuff like that. Um, as it pretty much is for me, it's something that is in a in a in some way also our fault because we made it accessible. Uh, but the other thing is like data mining stuff and, and, and taking people's stuff who really worked hard on it. It's just, it just really, really something that I don't like. And I know that people like to data mine stuff. And of course, things should be more secure. But overall, the, the for my um, sentiment towards this, this is pretty much very, very negative. Um, so I would just wait because I have really a lot of cool stuff planned. And I don't want to change these plans. Like I want, I want to do like a proper dev stream for everything and I have something really cool in the works that then the whole team has really cool stuff in the works and a lot of stuff that they really pretty much worked really hard to to to, to deliver to get everybody hyped and excited for some so for the things that we're working on so I'll just leave it at that yeah I, yeah uh, plus it takes me out of business I ain't got nothing to leak now yeah <laughs> 
I actually got uh, a, a question from me. Um, sorry, viewers. <laughs> it's it is it is about the coin flip, oh, but God. I I am Glass I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ask: <laughs> Will we ever see any faction other than monsters and NR uh, represented by coin flip? Will we ever see purple versus green instead? Because that that I think that's the most important thing. <laughs> like, will we ever see that? I, don't know. I think the it's community will will agree with me here. About uh, <laughs> well, she'll see. I mean, I'm 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 leaving this thing to kind of uh, being um, open in 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 some way. I mean, coin flip will be will be coming back, and I think the the, the number one solution for coin flip once coin flip once is once and for all would be for us to provide more things. I think that is something that kind of crept in. Uh, at some point, wasn't addressed properly and wasn't um, wasn't uh, clarified as to what percentage of, of actually has. I mean, of course, if you look at the overall state of the game, if you look at players who are kind of lower in the rank system, coin flip doesn't really influence them. What the biggest influence that has is a competitive play and at the top of the ladder. So those yeah. most likely, if you look at the overall overall community that we have right now. Most of these players are players who have been with, been with us since um, closed beta. So these are p people who are super dedicated to the game, super passionate about the game, which we like, but they are not the only player base of the game in some sense. But coin flip is a thing that will be coming back and is something that we are constantly looking into. So you never know. I'll just answer that. I know it's vague. I know it doesn't bring much to the table, but it kind of still opens up the discussion um, and, and doesn't close it by saying no, never, and that's it. So, but still, uh, famous words: coin flip is not a problem. <laughs> oh God. Uh, here's a question: Is the triptych art, the alternative arts for some of the like, you know, the muster cards and others, going to be returning in any form or shape? And could you elaborate more on why it had to be removed? Uh, for now, no. It was pretty much a decision on top of ours to not have these cards. Uh, I won't go into specifics, but it is something that is in some way open. But um, I wouldn't count on it happening like super, super quickly. I'm uh, pretty much um, keeping that open to some way, but I would say that the chance of it coming back, unless there's like a crazy uproar bar, we might think about it more, but for now we don't want to bring them back. Okay. Uh, will there be a uh, update, a live update to this PTR in its duration before it ends? Or will you be able no. to confirm that? No. No. We don't plan on updating the PTR. The PTR's idea right now is to uh, take as much feedback from it and use this um, to the best possible way. Um, and the other thing is uh, the fact that um, if we try to uh, do an update, it would not give us enough time to uh, prepare everything, implement these changes, test them internally a little bit more and see if this is the right way to go. Because sometimes we get um, feedback which is very um, limited in some sense that you pretty much say, this is bad, this is too strong. Well, um, how are we supposed to work with that? Or you get some other idea as how to change something, but it's not um, entirely that good of a change. Because, I mean, it's not it's, it's, it's not that easy as, as, as some players think. But um, I know the guys have looked at the, the most important stuff and we're still gathering feedback. So uh, whatever you have, like I said, just go to playgwent.com, send it over, and uh, the guys will be looking into that for sure. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of questions about Rose. Like, is there anything going to happen with the Rose? Like, is Rolock ever going to come back? Or like, what is, what is your you guys' thoughts about that, the Rose? Someone asked her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I, I, I wouldn't be able to speak for you know on, on behalf of on behalf yeah. of CD Project Red. I thought it was pretty much your guys' idea about it, so I think that the conversation is quite open. But in our in our sense, I still I still think that rows in some way are unique uh, when it doesn't come to maybe uniqueness in terms of placing cards on specified rows and having them roll locked. You still 
now have the kind of ability to to move stuff away, especially that you have uh, rows which are limited to nine cards. So this gives you some um, limitation as to placement and stuff like that. So in a way, it is unique because you need to spread everything out of three three rows. But um, we, I mean, we shall see. I I wouldn't want to go back to that because I think. Row lock was was the thing of the past, and I, if we want the game to 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 evolve, then it shouldn't be there. Uh, a question I've seen asked a bit in chat, like just uh, randomly, not by anybody specific, but um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I've seen it mentioned. You okay, be more I've seen it that, mentioned, man. but I'm gonna put the actual <laughs> question. Okay, they were mentioning vests. I think like a bigger question, rather than just the vest change, would be. Is are, is swap gonna stay as swap, or is it, there a chance that swap will be like reverted back to mulligan, um, or uh, do you do you internally feel that swap is a, an okay mechanic to keep in the game and it does what it what like what it should do? Uh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. I don't think I can I can go into deal, detail about that because uh, my knowledge is not that good as to um, if this is something that should be changed or not. This is something that a designer most likely should answer. But I'm more than happy um, to pretty much talk about Mulligan and Swap once I actually talk to the design team as to what they think about it and the overall health of it. Okay. All right, here, here's one that I totally just saw in chat. How is, uh, is, the, is there ever going to be Quen coming back in any form? Not even necessarily the card itself, but the effect maybe, you know, applied by other cards. Uh, it might. Uh, I don't know if the sa in the same way it would, but with us, it's pretty much, if you see most of the arts that are already in the game, they pretty much get introduced in some way back. Uh, with Quen, it was... Um, Pretty much problematic in, in, in some way, so we'll see. I mean, this is something that is kind of kind of open. I saw also a lot of questions about Quen, but uh, right now it's it's something moving into the future, and um, I don't think I'm also kind of the person to ask about this. So uh, I'll just keep it short of that. Uh, is it true that you guys are kind of like starting to maybe in a small way uh, moving forward change your policy between before it was you know 20 cards every two months of the rule is this like you know are, are we like going to start moving away from that like now that we're getting larger expansions or are we going to do both yeah I just want to say uh, Sir Pumpkin stop with the sad faces for Quinn I mean come on come on don't 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 trigger chat don't do it I mean, we're better than Delight. that. <laughs> Delight. Delight. Um, as for um, coming back, coming back to the question, which was, I already lost my train of thought. Um, now, now that now that there's sorry. new expansions, are we still going to get the twenty cards every two months, or, or is it going to be kind of moving away from that? Uh, we're slowly moving away from that, uh, like we promised. Uh, once we're able to finalize the core set, and I think there's a couple more cards that will be still added. Um, we'll be moving on to themed expansions and bigger expansions that will feature, feature more cards. Um, and we'll have an overall theme around them, so uh, we want to go in that direction for sure. Um, especially, it's, I think it's easier overall to have some type of theme, start introducing uh, kegs which are uh, limited to, 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 let's say, a certain theme, which where we don't go into a situation that we had with midwinter, midwinter, uh, midwinter, <laughs> midwinter. What's with midwinter? Midwinter, um, where you have a lot of new cards, but their accessibility is low because pretty much the things you open from kegs is um, cards that you already own. So it's pretty much you know doesn't doesn't really make a lot of sense. Yeah. So that's pretty much the the, the um, pretty much moving the different uh, direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now you you said you were slowly moving away from this. Is this is this slow or has this already happened? <laughs> like I said, we're still we're still missing some cards for for the core okay. set. So um, this is something that needs to be added. Uh, these cards uh, that are planned more coming in very very quickly. 
not maybe not that very quickly, but soon are the ones that are going to be connected to um, the upcoming game mode. You heard it here first, folks. In the <laughs> upcoming future, there will be more cards. <laughs> the upcoming future. <laughs> uh, any hint on what the new faction is and when? For example, you could answer in the form of a riddle. No. <laughs> <laughs> Or just nice try. Pumpkin <laughs> nose, nice try. <laughs> Will there ever be a any more like hard resets uh, for the uh, collections? Once come again, come again. Well, will there ever be any more hard resets for the collections since Gwent is still in beta? No, no plans with that. No way. That would be crazy if we did that. I mean, yeah. with, the, with the amount of cards was, right I was, now. I was gonna say. Um, I mean, that would be, as they call it, a nail to the coffin, pretty much. So no, no, no plans of such. Here's a very good question, actually. Um, with new kegs being added in that way, that in that way, will the kegs from level or rank awards be adjusted to the most recent expansion, or will it still be the classic set, essentially, or you know, the the core set? That is something that requires more more consideration and. For this thing, like uh, we've uh, recently created a team which is called Live Ops, and it's a team consisting of, um, um, let's say, specialists from different fields, and they pretty much like everything that you guys seen currently is like faction challenges, the things connected to uh, the premium keg weekends and stuff like that. These these guys are responsible for that, so um, we talk. All the time with them and they're pretty much open to um open for any any type of thing and they're also you know pretty much talking about um having like these kegs which are directed and also i know the guys also want to work a little bit more on how our overall shop in the game performs and how it works and what it features so i mean if everything goes the way they plan we're going to see some really cool cool things coming into gwent uh, this year so i'm really excited for it Are you guys uh, going to, now that you've kind of established this rule of, you know, these PTRs, and like you said, the last PTR for the Midwinter update was only, you know, one day, unfortunately, just for timing constraints. And you said, you know, you had it more of as like a server test than anything else. Yeah. Now that you're kind of doing these like more full on PTRs for our feedback, is this going to be kind of recurring and can we expect it for future patches? Yes, we want to, we want to keep uh, the PTRs open as much as possible. Uh, there might be some limitations as to having PTRs for some, um, let's so uh, let's say players who ha we have been working f with a little bit more, uh, which are of course under under NDA. Um, so we might have some things that we'll be showing them kind of behind the scenes. But uh, aside from that, overall we'll be um, uh, moving the way that we have open PTR so that everybody is able to participate. Because I think overall, um, you know, you can have a test uh, of, uh, I mean, you can have a, a player base, let's say, of even 100 people, and then you throw 1,000 people at the game. It's just, it's totally, you know, it's totally different. It's totally different feedback, totally uh, different players come into this. Because, like, when we talk with uh, players like Swim or, I don't know, uh, Merchant or Petrify or anyone who's kind of like, you know, very, very good at the game and is very competitive. Or even if I talk to the guys during like Opens and Challengers, the, like the top players, their feedback is totally different than what we see from, from, from other players. So I think overall, um, people who have a good knowledge of the game, good understanding of it, will have different feedback than players who aren't um, that good at the game. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and here's an additional one as well. It's Go for say it. Manus PTRs. Do you plan or consider having uh, a PTR for the new game mode as well? Whenever that may be. We'll see. We'll see. Um, uh, closed one, I would say yes. Open one, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, ideally, for everything that is, um, that is kind of big and new and it's going to change the game a lot, then I think um, it should be it should be given to a larger group for for proper testing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, 
any any other questions that you guys uh, have, have seen or uh, pretending pretending to see? Pretending to see. <laughs> <laughs> I see I stuff. Like, yeah. I saw go, something go. about more uh, accessible avatars and trinkets. If there's ever like more possibilities to get I've more seen... avatars, trinkets, all stuff like that. Yeah, some of the ones that I already saw will, will rotate, but i also seen a lot of new avatars and trinkets pretty much being created overall, supporters, titles, and stuff like that. Um, I think like their overall number is growing, and we'll have some way of kind of adding them to the game. So uh, for sure, yeah, I mean, we will. We will, for sure. Uh, I think we forgot about Petrified Monsters kind of in, in, the, in the overall thing, and I see some, pl some, pl some people in the... <laughs> chat going for, for for monsters what do you guys feel about monsters overall like after like you see that monsters didn't get much of a hit um in this uh, with this um upcoming balance patch but um do you think that they will be viable and what archetypes do you think will be viable with them mm, consume and possibly aired in probably the best ones monsters nests while you were saying it would get one boost yeah. still doesn't feel like it would mm -hmm. end up seeing a decent amount of play and the problem with nerfing it is that it was kind of like one of the few kind of i mean it, it, it was like you know nerfed because it was like you know almost at the point of auto include or auto include but it, it was still like you know like ash Lizzle was saying about restore it still felt like it was one of the few things kind of tying that faction together especially the non-consumer archetypes i feel like largely Consume just ends up with the most support by far uh, in terms of like, you know, bronzes that, you know, feel competitive and like a cohesive three round strategy. I don't know. What do you think, Crash? Uh, monsters are really hard to judge because they um, they kind of like come out of nowhere with this insanely strong deck that nobody sees and then they just crush everybody. Um, I don't know why it happens, but it's happened quite a few times already, like in the past few patches, I can think of it, or I can like remember it happening. Um, monsters in general have a problem where they have very different archetypes, and the amount of cards that are split between them, right, with the amount of cards that are in game, means that each one of those archetypes is... Uh, other than consume is very slightly under supported. Yeah. So something like Eridan is missing a few cards to be good. Something like Deathwish is missing a few cards to be good. Something like, you know, Weather Dagon is mis missing a few cards to be good. How many Same cards is Ogroid missing? It, it, <laughs> again, it, it's just, it's close, but, and they have a lot of archetypes, but all of them are just slightly below the curve, I think. Other than something like consume and potentially swarm consume, uh, Eridan always has the chance of just being good enough just because if people don't run weather clear, weather is still very strong. Um, yeah. We'll see. Ashley? Yeah, just overall consume, you know, will always be good. I mean, I see a lot of people talk about that th that's also like a one of monsters like problems like i think like the silvers you don't really have a lot of silvers i think that was also why the monster's nest was like auto included almost all yeah. the time because there was a point i believe where there was like five or four silvers run in like a consume deck something like that yeah. it's just the silvers of, of monsters are just lacking so maybe yeah just that needs the needs to change in order to have more archetypes of monsters be viable, I think. Yeah, I think like what you guys mentioned, like for some for some archetypes, uh, what they're kind of missing is, is is more cards as to that would cater to the archetype. Like we have right now guys combining Frost Aridin with with Moonlight kind of to try to make this the, the thing kind of work, but we nice to have like a full off Moonlight archetype, full off uh, you know, weather archetype. But that is something that uh, will happen. And of course we have um Unseen Elder, who's going to pretty much going to be leading um, the, the the vampire archetype, which will slowly kind of also creep into the game at one point. So I think there's some work to be done there, but uh, we'll see how they perform overall in the in the in the current meta. I know like guys like Ocean Mud have something something in store for us. Yeah, and then there's also like another archetype I completely forgot about, but we we also have the. Uh, potentially upcoming, like at some point in the future, the create monster archetype, um, where you 
only play create cards, so I can't don't wait for, to don't play that. Don't forget the eventual Vaji noise synergy. <laughs> 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 create and to create and to create and to create and to create uh, create create to create to create another create because we yeah. like creating <laughs> yeah so i hope i hope our, our our lovely friend petrify is happy at the other side of the pond uh listening to our th thing th what we think about monstrous so yeah. yeah, honestly, I'm I'm most excited to see kind of monsters come up. I, I was saying that earlier, like I was excited to see like, you know, some of the weaker attacks. If I had to pick one, it might actually be Deathwish even. It, it feels like, you know, it's such a unique play style that plays very different. Like a lot of monster archetypes that never, I mean, really never got like a chance to shine. Uh, and it's gone through multiple reworks as well. So uh, hopefully we'll be seeing that sometime relatively soon anyway that's going to be all the time we have for this week's episode of top decked uh thank you to my guests burza and ash lizzle and of course my replacement co-host crash over over overdrawing the hell Mardrom. <laughs> oh right of course yeah. uh, overdrawing and it's, it's uh been, it's been that he named <laughs> no, no longer mushrooms. mushrooms as we're no uh, longer Crash over mushroom. <laughs> over mushroom. Crash over shroom. Crash over shroom. <laughs> we're uh, Crash closing room. up. Do you guys have any uh, any closing statements, shout outs, anything you would like to say at all? Where can we find you? Uh, starting with Ash Lizzle. Oh, just uh, <laughs> I will change my name to this one like below, so that's great. No, you can find me on Twitch at the uh, Ash Lizzle and. I was also just want to give a shout out to the Wild Hunt tournament, of course. Like, mm. those guys deserve credit. And yeah, I believe those guys deserve a shout out for me. So that's it. Stole mine. Burza, do you have uh, any, any shout outs you'd like to give? Um, shout out to JJ Pasek. <laughs> <laughs> um. But in all, in all, <laughs> in, all <laughs> in all seriousness, uh, shout out to Wait, the. Wait, weren't serious? <laughs> so shout out. I mean, you know, you guys know me. I'm a, I'm a very, I'm a very positive dude. Um, but shout out like to the overall development team that's been working on the game. I know the guys and girls have seen some things, and um, uh, some things didn't go the way we planned, but they're they're really working hard. I mean, we really regrouped very quickly, and I think overall, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be. I mean, looking out to the future and looking at Gwen's roadmap for 2018, I'm, I'm more than confident that everything is gonna gonna go great. Um, and um, I mean, shout out to you guys. Thank you for having me. Um, um, it's it's really 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 cool always to come over, um, even though it's not Gwen Amel talk show talk show. It's 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 now top deck talk show. Still still feels like home. So thank you, Alex. Well, top decking and Gwen always feels like home. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <top> deck. <laughs> no, uh, can't confirm. I'd like to shout out an amazing tournament that's also upcoming. Uh, top deck GLO. Uh, it's it's gonna feature all the previous winners of you know the old uh, TGO opens and whatnot. It's happening on February 10th, and it's still an open tournament. But those eight winners are already seeded for the top 16. So it's really gonna be interesting how we're gonna see people that are gonna be really good at the Swiss and are gonna qualify through the Swiss go up versus previous champions. Yeah. And this also kind of, if you think about it. Because the champions aren't playing at the Swiss, it allows more players to essentially, more new players to essentially get into the um, into the uh, top sixteen, right? And uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. I, I can't yeah, wait I'm, for I'm, it. I'm excited myself. I'm uh, gonna be competing. You playing ooh, Crash? Ooh. Yeah, I, I am. Uh, I'm I'm playing in Trial of the Grasses right now. That's another shout out. That's another tourney that's going on. There's a lot of uh, community tourneys right now. Oh, yeah, they're... they're all they're all pretty 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 damn hyped. And I'll and I'll give you chat chat. I'll give you a little sneak peek. We're planning Coin Clash too, so Ooh, it's gonna happen. I like that one. I like that one. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I would like to give my shout out 
uh, I mean, I, I, Ash Lizzle stole it, but I was going to give my, my shout out to the guys uh, over organizing, you know, the Wild Hunt tournament. Uh, a lot of the people that are showing up to the tournament, those being, you know, Joe Snow, uh, Sir Pumpkin, and of course, No Control are helping out with things. They're going to do a hype stream tomorrow uh, that I will be hosting from my channel. Uh, and it's just going to be a lot of fun. I personally am going to go down there uh, myself. Uh, at least I plan to at this point. Uh, unless anything gets in the way, I will be going there myself. Uh, and it'll be cool to meet just like a ton of these people that I know online because almost everybody from NA is going to this tournament. Anyway, thanks for joining us on this week's episode of Top Decked. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.